What are the most naturally beautiful states? Beauty is subjective and different people have different opinions on what makes a state beautiful. However, some states are often considered to have especially stunning natural landscapes, diverse scenery, and unique attractions. And then there's Oklahoma and Kansas. We did a survey where we asked what states people think are the most naturally beautiful states. This, of course, is an opinion. We had about 4,000 respondents. Every state but Oklahoma got votes. Kansas only got six six and Nebraska got 13. We also had a section in the survey where you could say what the best thing to see was in the state that you'd chosen. Oddly enough, we had a handful of people from New Jersey that suggested we see D's nuts. Today, we're looking at the most naturally beautiful states in the US. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Maine. Maine is freaking awesome. It offers a rugged coastline, picturesque lighthouses, and beautiful national parks. This is an amazing state for hiking and nature photography. The coast here is covered in lighthouses. That's kind of Maine's thing. Lighthouses are very much a tourist attraction in Maine. Now, I know they're not part of nature, but I don't know. It's weird. I've always felt that lighthouses are sort of Part of the nature, especially if they've been there long enough. If you ever do visit Maine, don't overlook the forests and the inland lakes. The coast is amazing, but there's a lot more to Maine than just their coastline and their lighthouses. Maine sees a good amount of tourists. According to the Maine Office of Tourism, Maine received an estimated 15.3 million visitors in 2022. Tourism is a major economic driver for Maine, generating about $8.6 billion in revenue in 2022. Supports about 150,000 jobs, directly or indirectly. Now, according to the survey, the people said if you want to see Maine's natural beauty, try Baxter State Park. This is a vast wilderness area in northern Maine, known for its rugged mountains. You also have Mount Des Desert Island. Mount Desert Island is the largest island off the coast of Maine, and it's home to the Acadia National Park, which is my personal favorite national park, at least one of them. If you go there, especially not during the height of summer, make sure you wear hiking boots that say like Gore-Tex on them or they're waterproof. But the island offers a mix of outdoor activities, and it's got some nice towns too. On Mount Desert Island, you'll find Bar Harbor. If you ever go on a cruise and you stop in Maine, chances are you're going to stop at uh, Bar Harbor. Even though the locals ain't too keen on it these days. In the survey of just over 4,000 respondents, Maine received 103 votes. Number nine, Montana. Montana is known for its vast open plains, rugged mountains. There's that word rugged again. I don't know why I keep using it. And pristine wilderness areas. Montana has Yellowstone National Park, at least part of it. Yellowstone goes over like three or four states, while most of Yellowstone is in Wyoming. A small portion extends into Montana. The park is famous for its geothermal features that include geysers, hot springs, and the iconic Old Faithful. Wildlife such as elk and wolves roam freely in this vast and diverse national park. A majority of the natural beauty of Montana you're going to find on the west side of the state, where the mountains are. The east side of the state, or at least the east two-thirds of the state, that's a lot of open land and prairies. You can find beauty everywhere that just doesn't have a lot of the really cool things. Most people that are looking to, I don't know, do some photography or, you know, hiking, things like that, they're going to choose the left side of the state. Leave the right side of the state to people that are afraid of heights. Does anyone prefer the natural beauty of the open land, the plains and the prairie to mountains and streams and creeks and forests and all that? Let me know in the comment section below. I had one person explain it very nicely to me that looking out over the prairie, he was from Iowa, I believe, said it's almost like looking at the ocean. Very flat and peaceful, especially if you're getting out away from the road and all that. It's just relaxing. According to Montana's website, 12.5 million non-resident visitors came to Montana in 2022, spending about $4.4 billion. This created or supported almost 70,000 jobs. The tourism industry is a major economic driver in Montana, and it's expected to continue to grow in the years to come. According to the people on the survey, if you want to see some good natural beauty in Montana, Obviously, go see Yellowstone, Flathead Lake. Flathead Lake is the largest natural freshwater lake in the western United States, and it is surrounded by beautiful mountains. The state's a popular spot for boating, fishing, and 
you know, other water sports. You got various rivers like the Clark Fort River. People suggested almost every single one of the rivers. You got to see it. It's also suggested that you go see Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Area. Now, part of this is in Montana. Part is in Wyoming. It's got boating, fishing, things like that. And visitors can explore the remains of the historic mining town of Bighorn City. Montana got 145 votes. Number eight, Wyoming. Wyoming also has Yellowstone, like we discussed earlier, and the Grand Teton National Park. Everyone knows about these. They are beautiful. One of the best things I've seen in all my trips was just cruising through Montana on the Amtrak. Get your room, sit there, look out the window, watch those mountains. It is amazing. Driving's not as fun because I like to look out the window. Sure, you get the opportunity to go other places, not just sit on a train, but I like to look out the window, and that, you know, can be deadly when you're trying to drive someplace and see the sights at the same time. Wyoming welcomed an estimated 7.5 million visitors in 2022. That's an 8.5 decrease from 2021. The decrease was attributed to historic flooding at Yellowstone National Park, which forced the park to close for 10 days, but other parts of the park remain closed throughout the summer. According to the people in the survey, if you want to see some natural beauty in Wyoming, try again Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone is the first national park in the world and it's famous for its geothermal features, which we already discussed, like Old Faithful. And it's also got the colorful hot spring called Grand Prismatic Spring. I'm sure you've seen some pictures of that. The pictures look cool, but to see it in person is mind blowing. You also have Grand Teton National Park and the Snake River, which if you like rafting or you want to get into rafting or try it out, Snake River has more than enough of that. Of course, you can't talk about Wyoming without talking about the Devil's Tower. It's actually Devil's Tower National Monument. Got really famous in the Steven Spielberg movie, Close Encounters of a Third Kind. I got to see this movie when I was like nine or something. That movie freaked me out and I always, always thought something weird was going on behind Devil's Tower. They also got Bighorn Canyon National Recreation Area, which is great for fly fishing according to Herman's Outdoors. That's a great fishing channel if you ever get a chance. Wyoming got 157 votes. Number seven, the Wolverine State, Michigan. Sadly, by a lot of people, Michigan gets overlooked because of its Detroit situation. You see Detroit, you see Flint, you just think the whole state must suck. Absolutely not. This is a beautiful state, especially when it comes to nature. The state is really defined by its beautiful Great Lakes coastline, offering sandy beaches and stunning sunsets. Michigan is surrounded by four of the five Great Lakes. They've got Lake Superior, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, and Lake Erie. The state's extensive of coastline provides opportunities for beach activities, boating, fishing, and just staring at the water. Michigan has 3,288 miles of shoreline. The only place that has more shoreline in the United States is Alaska. Shoreline and coastline are different. Keep that in mind. Coastline means ocean which in case you don't own a map or a globe, Michigan does not touch the ocean. And it's not just the Great Lakes. They have a pond, lake, creek, stream everywhere in Michigan. Just go for a walk. You're bound to run into something. According to the people that voted for Michigan, if you want to see natural beauty in Michigan, you got to go to Mackinac Island. This is one of the biggest tourist attractions in Michigan. This is an island between mainland Michigan and the Upper Peninsula. There are no cars. There are no motorcycles. It's horses, walking, bikes. In town, they have like a hotel. Actually, they have a few hotels. They've got a golf course, things like that. But most of this island is wilderness with a lot of shoreline to explore. There's plenty of hiking trails. There's also like mountain biking paths, but there's this really neat bike path that goes along the shoreline of the entire island. You also have the Upper Peninsula, which again, more shoreline and a lot of wilderness. They have some towns and some small cities up there, but for the most part, this is nature. Ottawa National Forest is here. Hiawatha National Forest is there. Also on the Upper Peninsula, they have a place called Porcupine Mountain Wilderness State Park. One person suggested this. I just love the name. Anything named after porcupines, I love. 163 people voted for Michigan. 
Number six, Oregon. This is another one I'm surprised is all the way down at number six. I've been to every state and I've been hiking in a lot of states and I've driven around a lot of states. My honest opinion is Oregon should be number three. Amazing coastline, tons of forest, breathtaking mountains, lakes, streams, ponds, everywhere in Oregon. There's a lot of water in Oregon, even though some people claim we're running out of water. I, I, it's, it falls from the sky nine months a year, it seems like. I don't know how this place could run out of water. I love Oregon. I mean, their coastline isn't the coastline like you'd expect the Pacific Ocean. I grew up where it's, you know, shorts and suntan lotion seven, eight months a year, and that's beautiful. It's wonderful. But Oregon's coast is a different type of beautiful. According to Travel Oregon, the Beaver State welcomed 20.1 million visitors in 2022. That's a 26.5% increase increase from the 15.8 million visitors they saw in 2021. People that voted for Oregon suggested these to see some natural beauty. The Columbia River Gorge. This is obviously a river canyon, basically, created by the Columbia River. If you don't know the Columbia River, a few years back, these two dudes named Lewis and Clark found their way to the Pacific Ocean down this river. There's too many waterfalls to name them all in the gorge. But the one that everyone knows and everyone's seen pictures of is Multnomah Falls. I love the backstory to this waterfall. Obviously, it's a legend, but according to the legend, a tribe called the Multnomah Tribe, obviously that's where it got its name, was dealing with a sickness or a plague and the tribe was dying. A young woman, I've also heard a young Indian princess, sacrificed herself to the Great Spirit to save the Multnomah village from the plague. She did this by jumping off a cliff and the Multnomah people were saved. After her death, water began began to flow from above the cliff, creating the waterfall. This waterfall was actually mentioned in the journals of Lewis and Clark. Other places people suggest you see to capture some natural beauty in Oregon, Cannon Beach. Cannon Beach is a town, and right outside they have Haystack Rock, again mentioned in Lewis and Clark's journals. This is a giant rock just offshore. It's like in the waves, and it's shaped like a giant haystack. Oregon Dunes National Recreation Area is great. Silver Falls State Park is suggested, and so is Crater Lake. Obviously, Crater Lake. It's one of the most known things in Oregon. One I really enjoy is Mount Hood. It's outside of Portland, probably about an hour drive away. A little more, a little less, depending on the traffic. It's beautiful. 220 people voted for Oregon. Number five, Utah. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize how beautiful Utah is. You know, you see the pictures and it kind of looks like a desert, kind of a mountainous desert place. And then you see the Salt Lake. The Salt Lake's kind of interesting, but it's really not that attractive. I've been there. It smells like battery acid. But what a lot of people don't understand is they have the mighty five. Utah is home to five national parks. And these are great national parks too. Zion, Bryce Canyon, Arches National Park, Capitol Reef National Park, Canyonlands National Park. This draws people in. Utah received 17.8 million tourists in 2021. There's no official data yet for 2022. I don't know why. But it is estimated that the number of tourists will be similar or slightly higher from the 2021 numbers. One other thing that people mention, which it's technically not in Utah. It's on the border with Arizona, but Monument Valley. Monument Valley is right there. Some of the rock formations are in Utah, like Bear and Rabbit Summit, King on His Throne, and one called Big Indian. If you don't know what Monument Valley is, watch any 1950s Western. Some cowboy always rode through there. 225 people voted for Utah. Number four, Colorado. So every time I think about a state, you know, it's like I think Oregon should be in the top five and then you're all, well, Colorado's pretty good. They belong in the top five. You know, it's very confusing for me, but a lot of people really like Colorado. I'm one of them. Colorado is famous for its Rocky Mountains, national parks, and scenic vistas. Colorado claims that they saw 90 million visitors in 2022, but they have another category where about 40 million stayed overnight. So those are the real tourists that actually came there, didn't just show up for, I don't know, a football or baseball game and leave. This is according to the State Tourism Board. Tourism in Colorado supports about 176,000 jobs. That was in 2022. Those visitors spent $26.1 billion in Colorado in 2022. I like this. I was reading through their numbers. They have this stat broken out to how much it saves each household in Colorado. Because if these people wouldn't have dumped their $26.1 billion here, they would have had to make up that money and basically tax people. So each household saved $763.8. Eight cents.
Now, the people that selected Colorado suggest uh, the obvious Rocky Mountain National Park. There's a lot of ways to see the Rocky Mountains. I've driven through them. I've hiked in them. I've camped a couple nights in the Rocky Mountains. One of my favorite ways that I did a few years back was taking the Amtrak train through the Rockies. Nice, relaxing, had a little lunch, watched the Rockies. But the Rocky Mountain National Park is located in the northern part of Colorado and it features mountain landscapes, alpine lakes, diverse wildlife. You have trail ridges. Road, which is a scenic drive that takes visitors to high elevations and gives you breathtaking views. People suggested Garden of the Gods, which is right outside Colorado Springs. You have Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve, Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park. That one's pretty cool. And of course, if you're spending any time in Colorado, you gotta drive up Pikes Peak. You could also take the Cog Railway that goes up Pikes Peak. 285 people voted for Colorado. Number three, Alaska. If you didn't know Alaska was going to be on this list, you are sadly ill-informed. I would suggest a steady stream of Discovery Channel or what's that thing? Curiosity.com. I got that. It's an app. This isn't a promo. I don't even know these people, but I watch that all the time. Very interesting. But I've been to Alaska several times, a lot in the last year or two, doing cruises and stuff. I've been fishing in the Kenai Peninsula and a few other places. While researching the stats for tourism in Alaska, I didn't find much outside the cruise industry. They see a lot of cruise ships every single year, but during the pandemic, it really killed these towns. I talked to some of the locals there and they were telling me how bad it was. Now, it wasn't as much Alaska was stopping these people from coming through. They were more than willing to let the people in. But there's this strange law that's been around, I think, since the 1800s, where if you're a pleasure craft, which a cruise ship is, you have to go to another port in another country. You just can't go from one port in the United States to another. So they had to go to like Vancouver, Canada or something like that. But Canada wasn't letting any cruise ships in. So about halfway through the recovery, I guess you could say, from the pandemic, the downward slope of it, if you will, the United States passed a thing that said, you don't, we're going to suspend that law right now. You don't have to stop in a Canadian town. This is how drastic the cruise ship visitor drop was. In Southeast Alaska, where all the cruise ships go to, they saw 1.3 million passengers in 2019. 2018, they'd seen 2 million. In 2020, they saw 48 passengers. That's it. In 2021, I was one of the 124,000 that showed up at the ports in Alaska. Yeah, I went back as soon as they were letting us on and, you know, everyone was masked up. The good news is the 2022 season was a recovery year. They got to 1.15 million passengers. And it's my understanding they're killing it in 2023. Every cruise ship is at capacity right now. But of the people that voted for Alaska, a lot of them mentioned the Inside Passage, which is where you'll find Ketchikan, Juno, Haines, Skagway, Hunan, which is Icy Strait Point, and Sitka. If you do take a cruise, everyone suggests you take one that goes to Glacier Bay National Park. Not all cruises to Alaska are equal. They only let a certain amount into Glacier Bay. So make sure the one you're going to is going there, or at least to the Dawes Glacier. I think my favorite after Glacier Bay is Tracy Arm Fjord. That one's pretty cool. Everyone that suggested a place to go for Alaska was a cruise. One person noted one of the major things in Alaska, which is Denali National Park and Preserve. 296 people voted for Alaska. Number two, Hawaii. I don't think many people realize how beautiful Hawaii is. I mean, they know about the beaches, but they don't know how beautiful the rest of the islands are. Tropical rainforests, waterfalls, volcanoes. And yes, of course, stunning beaches. Hawaii normally sees between eight, and nine million tourists every single year. And 2022 was no exception. They saw 9.2 million visitors. So this was really strange. The people that voted for Hawaii couldn't seem to get off the beaches. That's what they kept suggesting. You know, Honolulu, go to Honolulu, do this, 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 this. And it was always the beaches. They even talked about Hanama Bay, which was just in our most dangerous swimming hole video. Hanama Bay is pretty cool. There's some problems that come with it. Probably the biggest problem is you got to get online to buy a ticket to get in. They only let a certain amount of people in. I think that's still the thing. One that wasn't mentioned, I think everyone should see, is Waimea Canyon. That's, uh, take a good camera. That's beautiful. 
And then of course, Diamond Head. Everyone suggests you hike to the top of Diamond Head. Yeah, it's got a great view, great place to take a picture, but can you take that picture? This is my problem with Diamond Head. It could be one of those memes, what you thought it was gonna be versus reality. They always show those for like cruise ships. You know, it shows a, what I thought it was gonna be in this woman in a nice dress, her and a man are having champagne on their balcony with the sunset. And then they show the reality. They're like in a buffet line behind six gentritarians wearing fanny packs. Well, that's what it is at Diamond Head. You get up the top, you think you're gonna be alone, you think you're gonna get this great picture, but there is a mass of people. It's like being in the pit at a Taylor Swift show. Everyone's nice, but they're elbow to elbow. And everyone's trying to get a selfie. But the insane amount of waterfalls that Hawaii has throughout, every single one of the islands just has a ton of different waterfalls. 341 people voted for Hawaii. All right, before we get to number one, did you know we sell t-shirts? There is a link right below the video. You see a picture of a t-shirt? We sell those. That's how we support the channel. One of the ways I should say. We're in the middle of making new ones too, so that could be cool. All right, on to number one. And number one. California. Yes, of course it's California. California has a truckload of problems. Actually, they got four or five truckloads of problems. One problem they don't have is not having nice things to see. There were about 50 suggestions, different places. There's about 50 other ones that I would suggest. I was born and raised in Southern California, moved up to Northern California when I was in my 20s, late teens, I should say. I have been all over that state and I've seen some amazing things. And I'm not even talking about the homeless guy I once saw chasing people around with no pants and a two by four. And if you want some proof that California has a lot of things to see, not everyone's going to Disneyland, okay? But they get a lot of tourists. And a lot of those tourists find their way to some of the national parks, the state parks, the coastline. In 2022, California saw 268 million domestic visitors and almost 18 million overseas visitors. Now, one interesting thing about that is California sees almost 400 million visitors every single year, but a good portion of those are just doing layovers, like going to Hawaii, going to Japan, something like that. In 2023, total visits to California are expected to reach 278 million. Okay, here's the things you have to see suggested by viewers and people that voted when you visit California. Napa Valley. Yes, Napa Valley is one of the world's premier wine regions. It's known for its vineyards and its wineries. They got tours and all that good stuff. Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever seen in my life. It's right there on the California-Nevada border. So if you're done with the lake and you're bored, you can go right across the border and do some gambling. You have Sequoia National Forest, the Redwoods, Death Valley, if that's your thing, Joshua Tree, and of course, the king of nature in California, Yosemite National Park. Yosemite is one of the most famous national parks in the United States, known for its iconic granite cliffs, waterfalls, and ancient sequoia trees. Half Dome and El Capitan are popular rock formations that attract rock climbers from around the world. The park offers hiking trails, camping, breathtaking scenic views. And if you ever do visit Yosemite and they're offering a tour, take the tour. It's totally worth it. Very interesting how that part came about and all that. Oh, it's an amazing story. And if you don't make it up to Yosemite, Ken Burns did a documentary for PBS where he talked about the national parks. It's called The National Parks, America's Best Idea. One of the episodes is on Yosemite and it is well worth watching that if you ever get a chance. It was on Netflix for a long time. That's where I watched it. Actually, I was working at Netflix when I watched it there. I didn't get much work done. Now, one that nobody mentioned that I think is worth mentioning, go to Big Sur. Big Sur is a rugged stretch of California coastline along Highway 1. Has insane views of the cliffs, redwood forests, and the Pacific Ocean. This is a popular area for people that want to just get great pictures and take a scenic drive. 353 people voted for California. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Which state do you think should have been number one? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, everyone, have a great day. Be nice to each other.